What's the quality and amount of water that you drink every day? Do you drink tap water filled with fluoride, heavy minerals, and residues of prescription drugs? Or do you drink water that's been purified and filtered and clean? What's the state of the internal waters of your body? Are they very sluggish and dirty? Or is the internal waters of your body clear and open and flowing, allowing oxygen and minerals to wash through, reaching the cells of your body to nourish them? I'm Laura Lee Humphreys, and in this episode of Faces of Freedom TV, we're gonna be exploring one of the most basic and important things for life, and that's water. Now, we all know that that's really important, that you've gotta have that to stay alive, but the quality of water is just as important as the amount of water that you drink. So stick around because I'm going to be sharing with you some important facts about water that's necessary for you to understand to experience health and vitality and longevity so that you can create a life that you love. Now this video is part of the self-care series of videos that's based on the body-based template I created called the seven source channels of nourishment. And this video, we're talking about the sixth gate or sixth channel of nourishment, which is all about the fluids of the body. Now this corresponds to your pineal gland. It's part of the endocrine system. It's also considered your third eye. It also corresponds to your sixth chakra in part of, as part of your energy system. So in talking about the fluids in this channel or gate, we're looking at the quality of the fluids and what they do to sustain and nourish our bodies. And again, nourishment in this series of, of seven source channels of nourishment, it's all about nourishing, bringing greater life and light and life force energy into your body. And water is one of the most fundamental elements of ways of doing that, of bringing that life force energy into your body. And so I'll be explaining to you what some of those things are that you can do to support and enhance bringing greater life force and health to you through water. The properties of water is a pretty good clear indication of your health and well-being, the qualities of water within your body is the indication of that. You know, we all know that water is vital. It maintains our life and enriches our lives. Yet in order to maintain that life, we have to actually drink water. You know, there's a lot of people that comment and complain about how they don't like to drink water <clears throat> because they don't like the taste. Well, stick around because I'll be offering you a couple of suggestions to improve that later on in this video. We need water to live the highest, fullest expression of ourselves so that the cells of our body can live the fullest expression so that we can live the fullest expression of our life. Every cell in our body knows this. It knows what it needs in order to function optimally. Water is critical for this. So my question to you again is, what is the state of your internal waters? Are they stagnant and sluggish? Are there critters and microorganisms and wastes, parasites, and other unnamed things floating around in the waters that your cells are also floating around in, causing them to stab, suffocate and stagnate, suffocate in their own waste? Think about what are you doing to maintain quality and purity of the waters of your body. We also want to look at, in, do, in answering that question, what are you taking in? What's the quality of water that you're taking in? Again, as I mentioned earlier, is it tap water filled with impurities, heavy minerals, residues of prescription drugs? Or do you filter your water to make it more clean and pristine and healthy as possible? So you really want to take a look at this and make some changes if, you, if you're not drinking clean water on a regular basis. You know, our health is largely determined by the nutrients, the hormones, the enzymes, and other vital, vital elements 
that our internal waters carry. It's through the bloodstream that nutrients and oxygen reaches the cells, and also through the blood that toxins and wastes are carried off and eliminated from the body. In addition to feeding you and taking out the trash, water soothes your emotions, awakens your psyche, and acts as a transmitter for all kinds of information. Information that you need energetically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, to maintain your health, maintain your body, and to direct your life. You know, when we're born, we're about 97% water. As adults, our bodies are about 70% water. So that tells you, it's like, that water is a very important, crucial part of our life. We are water. We bathe in water. We, we soothe our tired, sore, aching muscles in water. Our frazzled, frayed nerves can be eased and soothed in water, especially when we go into a hot tub or are outside in nature with natural hot mineral springs, or even just a warm, soothing bath with essential oils and Epsom salts. You know, water is critical for all levels of our health, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. When we're conceived, it's in water. When the fetus is developing in the womb, that space, the amniotic fluid, is salt water. It's a saline water that the baby's, baby's developing in. Our blood is structured almost identical as seawater. The trillions of cells that make up our body float around in a salt water sea. This is our internal water. So there's a correlation between the structure of the sea and the structure of our water in our body. And so you can see that the relationship that tells us we're not separate from nature. We're a part of light, part of the earth. We come from the sea. All life, all animal life evolved from the sea. You know, this also speaks to the importance of salts that we have in our body, in our diet. In the pro appropriate and the proper amount and the proper kind of salt. We don't want the alumina, aluminum iodized salt that's very destructive. We want the pure mineral rich salt that the earth makes like sea salts, Himalayan salts, Celtic sea salts. Those we can use within our diet and that helps maintain the balance of the salt in the water. You know, cells that are properly hydrated are firm and plump like a grape. When they become more raisin-like and dried up and withered, then they're dehydrated. It's the salt content in the outer environment of our bodies that our cells are swimming around in, that salty water helps regulate the balance of water both inside the cell and outside the cell. So we have the salts, potassium, electrolytes, they're critical salts that help maintain that balance and that pump between how the water flows in and out of the cells. You know, most people are chronically dehydrated to the point where we've even lost the ability to distinguish between dehydrated and hungry. Oftentimes we'll feel like we're hungry, but yet we're really not. So one thing that you can do to distinguish between the two signals is if you're feeling hungry, drink a glass of water, wait about 20 minutes, and then check again. Are you still hungry? If so, then you really are hungry and then it's time to eat. Otherwise, your body's just asking for a drink. So give it a drink of water. A good indication of whether or not you're dehydrated or well hydrated is through the color and the smell of your urine. If you're dehydrated, the body's gonna conserve water. And so that's gonna make the urine dark. And generally speaking, toxicity and dehydration go hand in hand. So if your urine is starting to have an odd odor and a smell, plus it's dark, then that tells you that you're not only dehydrated, but there's some toxicity going on that you could probably do well to eliminate and flush through your body. So drink some more water until you regularly have 
clear odorless urine which is what it's supposed to be normally be in a healthy body and then when the color deepens then you know you need to be giving yourself a drink so just use that as a little gentle guideline you know healers of all cultures all over the globe from all ages have always recommended that every that people have really good doses of water <clears throat> And today, then that's converted into drinking about eight to 10 glasses of water or about half of your body's weight if measured in ounces. So for example, a 140 pound body, a person, you would want about 70 ounces of water, which is about two quarts or roughly about two liters of water a day. And that will keep you well hydrated, keep your urine clear and odorless and the way it's supposed to be. So if you have a hard time increasing your daily water intake or you think it's just you don't like the taste of it then start drinking it medicinally so what does that mean that means using a straw and just sucking up little bits of it at a time to, until you can gradually um, accustom yourself to drinking more water what you can also do is add little slices of citrus fruits like lemon lime orange to the water to give it a little bit of a flavor and some nutrition and some variety and that will make it easier for the taste factor so that you can drink your water much more easily and get the water that you need you can also use one of the some of the endless endless combinations of all kinds of berries peppermint leaves mint leaves herbal leaves fruits and vegetables to infuse your water with to give it some color some flavor and some variety also adding a small amount of quality sea salt like the himalayan sea salt the celtic sea salt um, really a pink sea salt that has not been pro overly processed that still has the minerals in it adding a teeny bit of that to your water is also very helpful to, for giving you the minerals and electrolytes and salts that your body needs that i mentioned a minute ago Another thing you can do is add pure essential oils to your water, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. That also gives some variety, some flavor, and some nutrition to your water. You know, our brains are about 90% water. You know, our bodies, as I mentioned, as an adult body, were 70% water. And then within our brains, it's about 90% water. And that weighs about three and a half to four pounds. Now the water in our brain needs to be replenished and replaced every 24 hours. The thing is though, our brains do not get hydrated or get receive the water in the same way that the rest of the body does. The rest of the body gets it through our digestive system, where in the colon or the large intestine, then that will absorb all the fluids in the waters and it filters them and then it, it goes into the bloodstream and then from there all of the cells of the body is flushed and given a drink and hydrated and nourished the brain on the other hand has the blood brain barrier that means that the brain is not going to get hydrated in the same way that the rest of the body is it's got to have a different system that also means that by drinking the soda pop and the sugary energy drinks and the coffee and, the ener and such juice things that are not really juice, those things are not gonna hydrate you. They're also gonna not gonna hydrate your brain. So just cut those out to begin with anyway because nothing about them are, is healthy and good for you. What the brain does is, or the way it hydrates it, it's through an osmotic action from blood vessel capillaries. So that what does that mean is that the, the itty bitty teeny blood vessels, they drip water onto the brain, kind of like dew drops. It's like this osmosis precipitation, kind of like little raindrops falling onto the, the brain and nourishing and bathing the brain. Um, it's also, the brain is also fed by the cerebral spinal fluid, which flushes around the brain through the brain brain and in it it's it's the fluid that the brain floats within and in when that the cerebral spinal fluid ner uh, flushes and irrigates the brain that also activates and stimulates the pineal gland which is 
the master gland that opens up consciousness, intuition, creativity, intelligence. And I'll talk more about that in the next video because that's a big conversation right there. So this dripping osmosis happens in the third and fourth ventricles of the brain. So little spaces within the brain, about the mid, in the middle of your head, which is where the majority of this dew dripping, dew dropping precipitation occurs to hydrate the brain. Now, one of the things that has been proven that will bypass the blood brain barrier is essential oils, especially citrus oils. And they will do that in a way that does not disturb this osmosis, hydration, dew dropping process that the brain does to hydrate itself. So you can use citrus and mint oils in your water and that will also help hydrate your brain as well as nourish it. And so when you're doing that, then you want it with essential oils, you want to make sure that you're using glass or metal or ceramic water containers. You don't want to use plastic. Lemon essential oil, pure therapeutic grade lemon essential oil will eat the plastic, which means that it will break down the plastic molecules and they'll dissolve and be um, added, flushed and releasing, released into the water and then you drink the molecules of the plastic. That's not a good thing. You're just adding toxicity to your walk to your to your body. So make sure that you use glass or ceramic if you're going to use essential oils with your water. Now lemon essential oil is a very no nonsense detoxifying um, quality about it. So when you have that in your water and that goes in to help hydrate and, and nourish your brain, it's also really helping and very efficient in breaking down a lot of the ta the plaque, the waste filmy buildup of gunk that can cover your brain and cause a lot of problems. So brain plaque, if you if this is builds up, it's like waste plaque residue gunk based on toxic diet, toxic waters in your body, toxic lifestyle. If your brain is covered with plaque this film for too long, that's going to lead to a lot of diminished mental functioning, diminished cognitive functioning, brain fog, fatigue, a lowered ability to concentrate and focus. You're just not your brain's just not going to work right. And given enough time of this, then that can also develop into senile dementias and Alzheimer's. This has been not documented and known. More and more research is showing this. Additionally, if there's a lot of aluminum and heavy metal toxicity build up in the brain, that also is a known contributor to these dementias and Alzheimer's and cognitive problems. So you really wanna make sure that you're nourishing your brain, you're hydrating it, and lemon essential oil can help that whole process. You know, one of the water, one of the most crucial crucial functions of water, is its ability to cleanse and detoxify. Otherwise, the body and the cells would literally suffocate in its own toxic soup. You know, with all of the metabolic functions and all of the things that the cells and the enzymes and proteins do to function and, and digest and your food and do everything that keep you running, there's a lot of cellular waste that is generated and that's got to be eliminated from the body some way and so the cells has got to have to kick out that waste out of the cells and then it ends up and then that waste goes into the the water sea that the cells swim around in and if the water the internal waters of your body is not flushing that waste out then it gets really sluggish and not really good it gets stagnant and sluggish and so your, your cells have a hard time receiving oxygen and nourishment and then they start breaking down they don't receive the nourishment they don't receive the instructions and signals from other cells on how to function correctly and you're setting yourself up for all kinds of problems and diseases and health conditions so you've got to make sure 
you take out the garbage regularly, just like in your house or any other environment. You gotta take out the garbage out of your house, out of the inside of your body. Water is a universal solvent. It's one of the best ways of doing that. So just like in the ocean, the tides ebb and flow, it's washing the, the beaches clean, the waters in your internal, your internal waters will wash through your joints, your tissues, your cells, your organs, and cleaning and, f and flushing out all of the waste, bringing oxygen and nourishment to the cells. The lymph system, the circulatory system of your bloodstream is also very crucial in this flushing and cleansing um, process to keep your body clean and nourished and restored. So the water is just so very important in all of this. You know, a lot of today's illnesses aches and pains can be attributed to the body's cries for water, especially for clean water. So make sure, again, that you've got clean, purified water and you're drinking enough of it every day to keep you well hydrated. You know, so think about how a body of water sits in nature. If it doesn't have water coming into it, what happens to it? It gets stagnant, starts to stink, stuff starts to grow, there's critters, there's mold and algaes, parasites, all kinds of stink and rot, all kinds of decaying things, which is, you know, there's no life. However, if you unplug the water so that the water can flow into, the, into that body of water, unplug the stream, and the water can flow through that pond or the body of water, what happens? All of the stink, all of the filth, the critters, the bacteria, the molds, the allergies, all of that just takes care of itself and simply goes away. Your body will do the same thing when you give it enough water to flush it through, to flush out the wastes. So when that happens and the water's clean and pure again, then you've got the birds, the, bee, the insects, the fish, the plants, animals, wildlife coming to be nourished from that pond of water. Your life grows and happens. It's the same thing within your body. Again, we're not separate from nature. You're part of life. You're 70% water. And so the principles of water that we observe in nature, the same thing is occurring inside of you. So connect with that, pay attention to it, and nourish yourself with water. Allow it to give you life force energy. You know, when we breathe, we breathe, we exhale out carbon dioxide. Now this is a waste gas that the body doesn't need, otherwise it wouldn't eliminate it. The body has intelligence, it's not gonna eliminate something it knows it needs and can use. Carbonation in all of the carbonated drinks is made with carbon dioxide. So if it's a waste gas that your body's trying to get rid of, why in the world would you put it back into your body through a carbonated drink? Doesn't make any sense. Not to mention those carbonated drinks are gonna be loaded with sugar, with artificial sugars, with aspartame, a known neurotoxin to de destroy and kill your nerve and brain cells and the damage that sugar does. So it, there's nothing good about those sugary soda poppy drinks. So take them out of your diet for good. The sugar content alone in the soft drinks can turn your bones into Swiss cheese. Why? Because in order for the body to process and break down all that sugar, it's gonna leach minerals from your bones. This is not what you want. That's not a good thing. And then when you couple that with the carbonation, then it's like a recipe for disaster. Another factor is when you look at this country's municipal water supply, it's loaded with fluoride, which is a completely unnecessary thing. And contrary to popular bias and all of the popular medical expert opinion and advice, whoever those experts are, fluoride does not prevent cavities. It does absolutely nothing for that. And there's research and science that is starting to demonstrate that. Despite the push, the marketing spin through mainstream media and the Dental Association, who wants you to believe that you have to have fluoride? That is absolutely not true. You don't need fluoride in your toothpaste. You don't need fluoride in your water. 
Cavities are made from a poor diet and too much sugar. So, and, and fluoride is not going to do anything to prevent that. What fluoride is, it's a highly toxic nerve gas that was used in World War II concentration camps to kill millions of people. It contributes to many, many different diseases, including cancer. It lowers your IQ, it dumbs you down, and makes you very complacent and docile. Now, if you were a prisoner in a concentration camp, this could be a very good thing for your captors so that you don't get all rebellious and revolt against them before they can slaughter you. And of course the government knows this and it does and the agencies of the government knows this and they don't want you to know that. So I'm telling you here, do your research and you'll find out the origin of fluoride, where it came from. So ask yourself, is this state a state that you really want for yourself to be what I called call it stuck within the 3D reality of being dumb, diseased, and docile. That's what fluoride will do to you and, and do to your brain. It will also calcify your pineal gland, which prevents you from tapping into your higher spiritual intelligence, and tapping into and developing your consciousness, your creativity, and your intuition. So. You don't want to have fluoride in your water, in your toothpaste, anywhere near you. It's not a good thing at all. Get it out. So again, question yourself, assess yourself. How important is it that you do the activities that I'm sharing you in the, with you in the self-care series to bring greater life force, greater nourishment, greater energy into your body? This is one of the most critical things that I'm doing that is to get the fluoride out and to make sure that the water that you bring into your body is clean and pure. Since we are 70% water, to allow the waters that you bring into your body to flush and cleanse and take out, take out the, the waste, the garbage, the toxins, so that your cells can breathe, can get oxygenated, so they can receive the nourishment they need to function optimally, which keeps you functionally, functioning optimally. So consider this. Another thing you wanna look at is most water is very hard. It's a lot, has a lot of inorganic minerals and salts in it that when you drink it, they settle into the body, into areas where they cannot be broken down and eliminated. Oftentimes the body can't even recognize what these foreign inorganic salts and minerals are, let alone use them. And so what happens is that they'll settle into joints and contribute to problems there. The hardening of the arteries, gallstones and kidney stones. You know, blood vessels are miles and miles long. And there's a lot of storage area for things to be um, put in along the walls of the arteries. And so likewise, if you look at pipes and drains of old buildings, you'll see a lot of this hard water, hard mineral build up and deposit and all these salts stuck within the inside of the pipe, creating a lot of just gunk. Now compare that or parallel that with the state of your pipes and your arteries and veins. You know, again, if you have a lot of toxicity in your diet, a lot of poor quality diet, not good quality water to flush your system out, then the inside of all your pipes, your arteries and veins can get built up with all of this heavy mineral plaque and that contributes to problems with your cardiovascular system creates buildup and plaque and, and obstructions. So again, water, quality of water to flush your system through. So to bypass that, then make sure you have filtered, pure, clean water as much as possible to keep your water, to keep your body flushed out, to take out the chlorine, the fluoride, the prescription drug residues, the unwanted chemicals, the bacteria, the microorganisms, all of that stuff that you don't need in your body. So good things that you can choose is reverse osmosis water, structured water, which in the process of structuring it is purified and filtered and clean 
and also distilled water. Those are some, some of the best choices to choose from. Now distilled water, is, it's been heated and evaporated, so the water is evaporated out and then condensed back down into liquid. So you just have the, and then in the process of doing that, chemicals, the salts, the heavy minerals, the bacteria, all the junk that's been, that was previously in the, in the water, the, all that stuff falls out. And so you are left with only oxygen and hydrogen, just pure straight water. You know, distilled water has gotten a bad rap by certain people because they consider it to be hungry water. And this means that it will absorb and latch onto salts and minerals and such and then carry it, through, carry it out of the water, carry, carry it out of the body. And in some ways, yeah, that could be a very good thing because most of us are so filled with inorganic salts, heavy minerals, and unusable, unstable compounds that it, they need to be flushed out of, the out of the body. And distilled water is a really good agent or form of water to do that, to pick all that stuff up and carry it out so that all of those, all those salts and inorganic minerals don't settle in your joints, in your gallbladder, in your kidneys causing problems. And so that can, that can, distilled water can create or provide relief for arthritis and stones. And so consider using that. And again, recognize that the body knows what it needs. It recognizes compounds and salts and minerals that it needs. It's not going to eliminate what it can use and what it can, what it needs. So trust your body that it knows what it doing it's got intelligence in it and just give it the resources that it needs like pure water to maintain your life okay so I've given you several suggestions several different insights about water and the characteristics of water and what to avoid and what water does so I encourage you to look at how you are nourishing yourself how you're flushing yourself with the quality of water and make adjustments if you need to the Download yeah, the lifestyle assessment of the seven source channels of nourishment that this series is all about is available for you to download. Just click around anywhere in this video. There's the link for you to do that. Do that lifestyle assessment and see how you're well you're doing in bringing life force energy nourishment into your life, into your body on all levels, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. It's not just about what you put in your mouth through food. It's in nourishing yourself in all areas of your life. And I've also mentioned, and we're talking about this, that one of the important things to keep you nourished is to keep your body clean, giving your body a, a good bath from the inside out. Cleansing regularly is a perfect way of doing this, using water again. So you can do this, a good a routine of doing this is about every three to four months or with each season, like once in the spring, summer, winter, fall, take about five to seven days and focus on flushing your body very well with loads and loads and loads of liquids. Yeah, you'll be spending some time in the bathroom and at the same time, your body will appreciate it. So you can use herbal teas, just water, water with an, infused with essential oils or infused with the, the, the berries, the mint leaves, the, the um, fruits that I mentioned earlier. You, you can use that uh, as part of your, your cleanse. You can also put in some essential oils in there. And you can make freshly squeezed fruits and vegetable juices and just load up on those juices and fluids for those five to seven days. If you need to, you can have solid food with it, provided it's good, solid, clean food. You're, you're cleansing yourself. So just have just solids, fruits and vegetables. You don't want to have a lot of the heavy stuff like meat, no dairy, no cheese, no grains, no nuts, just fruits and vegetables and fluids for five to seven days. And based upon your toxicity level, your schedule, your tolerance for, for cleansing, will determine if you need to add in a little bit of solid food during that time or if you can do it primarily for on liquid. But just try it and see how your body feels. You will thank you for it, I promise. I've done many of these. So as an added extra bonus with this video, then I'm offering you a special PDF download that walks you through a basic introductory cleanse. 
so that you can learn more about the process of cleaning out your body and using the element of water to nourish and hydrate you and bring greater life force into your body. So you can download that at the link here too. All right. So did you find value in this video? What did you find of most use for you that you can use? How do you nourish and cleanse and flush your body out caring for your internal waters of your body? Do you need to make some changes with the quality of water that you, and fluids that you take in? I'd love to hear from you of what you found valuable of this video. If you did, I also encourage you to share this video with people who could benefit from it. Subscribe to my channel, Laurel, uh, Faces of Freedom with Laurel Lee Humphreys. Hit, um, click the notification button so that you can be notified of when other videos are dropped here on my channel. I do them on a, on a regular basis. You can also check me out on my website, laureleehumphreys.com and on social media, especially at Facebook under my name, laureleehumphreys.com. So I'd love to hear from you and share this video. And until next time, flush yourself well, stay hydrated and take care.